free McDonald's coffee because, you know. Hi, I'm Kim. Welcome back to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. If you have not, welcome. Um, today I'm going to tell you another paranormal story. A story from the house that I lived in in Florida. Um, like I've told you before, I have many, many stories from that house and this is just one of them actually. I'm going to tell you three short ones uh, because they all happened in the same time frame same time period of a few weeks. Uh, so the first one I'm going to tell, um, one night I was over at my best friend's house and I had told her some of the things that had been going on in the house, you know, and she had not experienced them for herself. It's not that she didn't believe me. It's just that she kind of just blew them off or, you know, just didn't pay much attention to them. And uh, she just listened to me talk about him. Well, um, one night I was over at her house and we were talking and I decided to call my phone, my house phone. Now this, this was back when you still had house phones and you could dial your number. And as soon as your answering machine picked up, you could press some numbers and you could listen to your messages. Well, I had just started dating this guy, so I wanted to call the house and hear my messages. So I dialed my number. This is at her house, mind you. Um, dialed my number and somebody answered. And it sounded like an elderly lady. She said, hello. And I hung up, because I thought, well, I dialed the wrong number. So I dialed it again. And again, an elderly lady, what sounded like an elderly lady, answered. <clears throat> and I said, what number am I dialing? I'm, I'm trying to reach my, you know, my, my home and I keep dialing the wrong number. What number is this? And she hung up. So I, I said, okay. So I dialed it again. And once again, she answered and she hung up. So I said to my friend, let's call her Penny. Let's say Penny. So I said, Penny, can you call my house and, you know, see if I'm down the right number or the wrong number? But somebody keeps answering the phone in my house and I know there's nobody there. So she called my house. Sure enough, a elderly lady answered and Penny says who is this they hung up uh, Penny hung up she called back again once again elderly lady answered so she looked at me and she said somebody is in your house and she says get in the car well Penny was a don't take no crap kind of girl. Um, so we piled in the car and off we went all the way across town to my house. Well, when we pulled up in the driveway, of course, nobody was there, you know, and um, walked in the house. The house was dark, hadn't left any lights on. House was dark, nobody was there. And I know that I know that I know, and she knows that she knows that she knows that somebody answered that phone. Um, and so that was, that wasn't really scary. Well, it was scary at the time. Um, however, we never figured out what that was, but we do know that somebody answered my phone. So that's one story. The next story, uh, let's see. I've got two in mind, but I don't know which one to tell next. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you this one. I had just started dating this guy. Well, not just started. We had been dating probably four or five months. And uh, let's call him Evan. Let's call him Evan. So, um, 
Evan knew about some of the things that would go on in the house. And he had spent the night there the night before for some reason. I can't remember why. But anyway, he was there. Well, we had gotten into an argument the night before. And um, so the next morning, we were all up and I was getting ready to go to work. Um, the kids, I was getting the kids ready to go to school. <sighs> Excuse me, to go to school. And I, I was gonna have to take him home before we did all this. So we were still really mad from the night before. So um, he's going around the house. Now he had a bunch of stuff at my house. He had all kinds of clothes, books. He had books everywhere. He loved to read. Well, that morning that we got up, him still being mad and me too. Oh, sorry. Sorry. McDonald's coffee because, you know. So um, that morning he's going around the house and he's gathering up all his books he had there. He's gathering up all kinds of stuff. And he was walking down the hall with this big armload of books. And he was going to take them to the car. <coughs> God, what's wrong with me? He was going to take them to the car. And I was walking behind him right, you know, down the hall. I was right behind him down the hall. <sighs> God. This coffee ain't doing jack crap for me this morning. So, the whole time he's walking down the hall with this arm full of stuff, I'm saying, you, my mouth, I've got a mouth, and it runs constantly. And so, I was saying to him the whole time he's walking down the hall, you better get everything because you're not coming back. So, he, when we get to, we go down the hall, and when we get to the living room, he takes a right to go out the door, and I go straight into the kitchen. Oh, God. I don't know why I'm so sleepy, but I am. Um, so he takes a right to go out the door, and I go straight into the kitchen. Um, and as I'm walking into the kitchen, I get at the refrigerator, and I hear this big loud <laughs> <laughs> it's funny now, but it wasn't then. I hear this big loud crash. And I peek my head around the corner. And the door's wide open. Oh god. I am so tired. I need some coffee grounds. I could straight up eat some coffee grounds right now. So I'm looking and I can see down the steps of the house and he is laying at the bottom of the steps outside with books everywhere. And I walk to the door and I look at him like, what are you doing? He goes, he had the most horrified look on his face, the most disgusted look on his face and he's like, why did you do that? And I said, do what? He said, why did you push me out the door? And I knew I hadn't. So I said, I didn't push you out the door. He swore up and down I pushed him out that door. But I was in the kitchen. And the kids were still in their bedrooms. So um, from that day on, we broke up for about a month. but. Oh, God. I am so sorry. I am yawning like crazy. But um, from that day on, he would not go in my house without me being there. I mean, he, he just wouldn't. Because sometimes before that happened, he would, uh, he had a key. And sometimes he would be there when I came home from work, you know, just to help me with dinner with the kids or whatever. 
But from that day on, he would not come back to that house. See, that's another story. Uh, let's see. I, God, I've got so many stories. It's not even funny. Okay. Um, another story. One night, about... I don't know. <gasps> Jesus. Oh, my God. I can't quit yawning. I'm so sorry. One night, um, I had, I was working at the mall at this time, and I would get off work probably anywhere. But, well, we closed the mall closed at nine, but it, sometimes it was ten o'clock before I left. Um, and one night, I got off work and I came home, and my kids were either off spending out with friends or whatever, but they weren't there, I remember. And I started getting these phone calls. <sighs> this is ridiculous. I am so sorry. I don't know why I'm yawning like this. Um, but I started getting these phone calls and it they would leave messages on my machine and it was whispering it was always whispering and i couldn't tell if it was a male voice a female voice a kid's voice i couldn't tell um but it was always whispering and it was always whispering the humpty dumpty nursery rhyme um i don't have any audio of that um, I wish I did I saved it for a long time but when I got rid of my house phone that was gone too but it was it was literally it, it was like this I mean it was just eerie I, it was always on my answering machine when I got home from work it was always whispering and it was always the same nursery rhyme beyond ridiculous I'm sorry um, but one night I got home from work and I pressed play on my um, answering machine and there it was again well I called my friend the one that I was telling you about in the first story what do we call her Penny I called her and I was standing at the bar looking into the kitchen and I'm, I'm, you know, talking to her on the phone, and I'm like, this is crazy. I keep getting these phone calls, you know, and as I'm talking to her on the phone, I had one of those trash cans that has the lid on it that spins. You know how it will rock like this, and if you hit it, if you hit it hard enough, it'll spin. Well, I'm sitting there talking to her, and all of a sudden, this trash can lid just starts spinning. I could not get out of that house fast enough. I remember being on the phone with her and completely freaking out. And I had a cordless phone, so I could walk outside a little bit of distance and still have reception talk to her. So I could not, I literally shot out of that house. I could not get out fast enough. Still don't know what that was. Um, well, I do now looking back, you know, but that was back when everything was pretty new to me with this house. But that's just another little, little something, something that happened in that house. And um, there's, I, I'm telling you guys, there are so many things that I can tell you about that house. And I will tell you. Um, there's stories that um, my husband, I'm going to have my husband come on and tell um, stuff that he experienced in the house. Um, my daughter is coming at Christmas. I'm so excited. She's coming for Christmas. She lives in Colorado. But um, I'm going to, when she's here, I'm going to, we're going to sit down and I'm going to have her tell you some stuff um, that she experienced in the house. Um, my son can tell you some stuff, but those are three little stories I thought you might enjoy. Um, if you enjoyed them, leave me a comment down below and let me know. 
Um, and if you'll subscribe to my channel, I'll be forever grateful. And give me a big thumbs up. I would certainly appreciate it. And I'm gonna go have some coffee grounds. McDonald's, you ain't cutting it this morning. Until next time, peace.